So you've probably heard a lot of people, including uh, Buck Angel, who I would have had coffee with last week, but we were a little busy. Uh, he was in town, um, arguing that Israel is in the moral right in its genocidal campaign against Palestine because Palestine discriminates against queer people. You know, it's funny. A lot of people say you shouldn't speak for a group that you're not a member of. And yet those people seem to be very comfortable having spoken for queer Palestinians without asking them what they thought. But The Guardian did an article, not that one, um, asking Palestinians what they thought. And they uh, they don't seem to share the uh, the Western opinion of this um, in some circles. No pride in occupation. Queer Palestinians on pinkwashing in Gaza conflict. Now, this picture here, this is one of two pictures that was actually tweeted out by the state of Israel after they went into Gaza to show how triumphant and LGBTQ friendly a genocide this was. So take that, Hitler. Hitler wasn't friendly to the queer community. When Dowd, a veteran queer activist, recently walked past rainbow flags hung for Pride Month in the old port city of uh, Jaffa, a historic center of Palestinian culture, he was overcome by a wave of revulsion. The most famous symbol of LGBTQ plus liberation has been so co-opted by the Israeli state that to a gay Palestinian like him, it now serves only as a reminder of the horror unfolding just 60 miles south. Last November, Israel's government posted two images from Gaza on its social media account. So that first picture was the first one. This was the second one that they tweeted out. And this is, um, I got to get a little closer. Flag raised in Gaza. Yoav Atzmoni, who is a member of the LGBTQ plus community, wanted to send a message of hope to the people of Gaza living under Hamas brutality. His intention was to raise the first pride flag in Gaza as a call for peace and freedom. Now, I really like this one comment that I caught in the screenshot. You have got to be the dumbest people on earth, bro. Jesus Christ. (laughs) Amen. Smoking res. Um, At the time, Israeli attacks had killed more than 10,000 Palestinians in Gaza, including more than 4,000 children, according to the Gazan Health Ministry figures. The toll has now risen to over 37,000, and more than a million people are on the brink of famine. Quote, I saw the disgusting use of pride flags in Gaza, said Dowd, a Palestinian citizen of Israel whose name has been changed. He asked for anonymity because Palestinians have faced arrest and persecution for expressing solidarity with civilians in Gaza and criticizing the war. Quote, now in this period when terrible death looms over all of us, I can't see the pride flag any other way. It really turned my stomach seeing them. It was revolting, he added. Dowd's reaction is shared by many queer people around the world, said Philip Ayoub, professor of international relations at University College London, who researches the intersection of politics and LGBTQ plus rights. Quote, that cognitive disconnect of seeing what else is in the image, rubble that was people's homes, then seeing the flag being displayed in a celebratory way. It is a massive violation of people uh, to people who have fought for their rights under this flag. Those images from Gaza are part of a long running international campaign that critics call pinkwashing because they say it aims to bolster the Israeli state by linking it with queerness, presenting it as an explicit counterpart to a Palestinian identity depicted as exclusively and violently homophobic. It exploits global support for LGBTQ rights to further an Israeli ultranationalist political agenda and legitimize the oppression of Palestinians, said Saeed Atshan, chair of the Department of Peace and Conflict Studies at Swarthmore College and author of Queer Palestine and the Empire of Critique. This messaging was driven not by genuine enthusiasm for LGBTQ rights from a government that includes a self-proclaimed, quote, fascist homophobe as finance minister, he said, 
but was deployed strategically for political ends. They should they should make him the uh, the king of the pride parade in Tel Aviv. That guy. Yeah. Um, quote: The Israeli state has different audiences. Uh, Atshan said. If it is addressing LGBTQ-friendly domestic audiences in Israel or globally, then it whips out this pink-washing discourse trying to portray Israel as a gay haven. For homophobic audiences, including at home and Christian Zionists abroad, it presents a homophobic discourse about religious conservatism and adherence to family values and revulsion towards queerness. When Raud Amorkos, a Palestinian citizen of Israel who is a human rights lawyer and award-winning activist, heard the Tel Aviv plan to mark pride this year, she was stunned. Quote, is there no sense of humanity to realize that there are people being bombed every day in Gaza by your own country and you're calling for pride and equal rights for queer people? Who cares at the moment if you have equal rights as queers? I honestly don't care. Because if we don't have equal rights as humans, it doesn't matter. Wow. These guys should really call Buck. They should really call Buck because he's been arguing that, yes, the Palestinians would be, if you're queer in Palestine, you'd be thrown off a roof. The queer Palestinians support Israel. Well, I guess he did, he's speaking for them, but didn't talk to them, apparently. Israel ranks better than most neighbors on the Equal Dex LGBT Equality Index in 50th place globally. Palestine is ranked 146th with consensual same-sex sexual acts legal in the West Bank, but not in Gaza. But the idea that Israel serves as a regional haven for the queer community feels particularly cruel and hypocritical, activists and academics said, at a time when the LGBTQ plus population of Gaza has no more refuge from Israeli bombs than any other Palestinians. Quote, there is no pink door in the wall for queer Palestinians to leave Gaza and make a life in Israel, said Ayub from UCL. The Israeli rhetoric just makes it even harder for gay Palestinians. I'm sorry, man, I'm not doing the whole alphabet again, because it reinforces the idea that queerness exists nowhere else. It erases the fact that there are Palestinian activists, queer Palestinians. Many people in the queer community are drawn to the idea of gaining acceptance by being nationally useful and submissive to the state, Yahil said, not because we are human beings, but because we are of service. That vision of queer national identity was prominent at Tel Aviv's Pride this month. The usual parade was canceled for a muted seafront concert that included calls for the release of hostages and celebration of queer Israelis serving in the military. But there was no mention of Palestinian civilians killed in Gaza. Stories shared at the event included a transgender woman's decision not to change her official gender identity so she could still serve in the reserves and fight in Gaza. Morcos is baffled by Israelis who describe their country as a democratic haven for the queer community in a hostile region, particularly when real tolerance rarely extends beyond the limits of Tel Aviv, saying, quote, how can you boast of your democracy for queers that then oppresses millions of Palestinians? So, hey, Piers Morgan should have some of these people on. Yeah. Yeah, that's something. And this is something that, you know, you've been sort of tweeting about, uh, you know, um, because, yes. you know, in New York City, like obviously, you can you can see this everywhere. You know, we were just in the city. You see this, you know, explosion of pride at a time when a lot of the people and this is not to diss Pride Month. I'm all for Pride Month and Pride Parades and things like that. I mean, I'm not a parade guy myself, but, uh, you know, if that's your thing. That's fine. Uh, but not you that there's anything how, wrong with that. Not that there's anything. Not that there's anything wrong with that. Uh, but you said that there is uh, a major sort of inconsistency where now, when the calendar flips to June, everybody is a social justice warrior, and a lot of people who like to virtue signal that uh, don't like to either stay silent on the Israel Gaza issue, or they will defend Israel because they right. they they see Israel as this bastion of Western values. Well, and this is what we've been saying, and it's good to see it co-signed by queer Palestinians. We've been saying, do these people really care about this while they're being mass slaughtered, queer and non-queer alike? And that's exactly what they're saying in this article. What do we care about this? 
they're killing us. They're killing us. They're massacring us. And also the article, it gets into other things. It gets into how the intelligence services will use blackmail evidence against gay Palestinians to get them to cooperate. And people have been executed because of this. Um, so the idea, the article really debunks the idea that even if you are queer in Israel, it's great. Once you're there, it's not, it's not great. It's not great. They, you, they just use them as a human shield. And this is what I've been, this is what I've been tweeting about. And I've gone back and forth a little bit with gay friends because I've been inflammatory as I tend to be. <laughs> and I've been, been saying, well, well, gosh, you know, if, if, if pride doesn't get celebrated because of the genocide, that would be the real tragedy. And um, I, you know, I had somebody, a dear friend of mine, uh, who said, can, can you just let pride be about pride? I said, well, what you have to remember is there are lots of people, most of them not uh, queer themselves, who are using you as a human shield to deflect from things they don't want to talk about. Jesus Christ, Northrop Grumman, had a had a float in the last pride parade you can find that video of them <laughs> celebrating pride <laughs> online um so what are you talking about we were talking about two different things you you want to celebrate your queer pride okay well you have to remember as many members of that community do that's where the term pink washing comes from they themselves decry how this has all been co-opted and it's used as a shield. And probably there's no greater example, especially after you read this article, of pinkwashing than the state of Israel. Yeah, no, no question. No question. I mean, that was an immediate thing that we noticed right out of the gate. Right out yeah. of the gate, we noticed that, right? Yeah, Chelsea Handler went, we're... going up with Noah Tishby. Hey, did you know Israel, they have the the gay weddings, you know, the fun ones without the well, straight people? No, they people. don't. Yeah. No, oh, but they, they don't. don't. Right. Well, they don't. They right. don't. You have to go outside of Israel and then the state will recognize your marriage because you can't have a marriage within Israel that's not recognized by the Orthodox rabbinate. So if you you can't have an interfaith marriage within Israel, you have to go outside Israel to get married and then you come back and the state will recognize the marriage. Exactly. Please clap. <laughs> 